पठा संस्कृत नित्यम वदा संस्कृत सदा ध्याया संस्कृत सम्यक् वंदे संस्कृत मतर संस्कृत प्रसारा नैज सर्व दधाम्यहम संस्कृत सदा भक्त वंदे संस्कृत मतर संस्कृत कृते जीवन संस्कृत कृते यजन आत्माहुत मे वंदे संस्कृत मतर हिंदूधर्म सज पवित्र संस्कृति तथा संरक्षणनुकुयाम विश्व शांति समन्वित Now I would like to bring Raghav if he has uh, Raghav do you have any more additional questions? Yeah, I do. Uh then you have the beginning. Uh kind of on a related note. Um this is uh, sorry, this question is uh, addressed to uh, Vani Bagini. Um uh on a related note, um I guess beyond Sanskrit and Sanskritam, um what other Hindu traditions or aspects of Hindu culture have you been drawn to or interested in the in learning more about in terms of how it's practiced or or how it's described in uh um Hindu philosophy? Yeah, um I am also interested in 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 yoga. I have been also practicing practicing yoga and meditation and that's how all this started. And um I spent so many years traveling to India uh every every uh, almost every year and what I have experienced uh, in India is just uh, what I have learned is only purely as a witness I have been there and I have been doing uh, a lot of um tirtha yatras going mm -hmm. to the sacred places in India as I studied architecture I was going uh, into all the sacred uh, pilgrimage in India so that brought me closer to the community and and the way they they live mm -hmm. why they are doing all this pilgrimage why um they are uh <clears throat> going to these temples long long distances it remembers me one we have in Mexico we have a big pilgrimage on 12th of uh, december every year so every all the pilgrims come to that uh, place and uh, in the same way indians go to the mandirs so i have been interested by that but that phenomenon of of uh, this hinduism always wanted to understand what what was happening and um, Another point is also that what I saw is that the goal of Hinduism is is to make is to make uh, is to make you a better person every day. There is tolerance. There is uh, seeking after truth and share it with with the with the other communities. The openness, these values of uh, uh, tolerance and nonviolence. and see the world as a as a vasudeva kutumbakam so that is what attracts me of uh, and i am interested to india and i keep traveling i have been living with families uh, in the north in the south and one thing is rajasthan other thing is uh, tamil nadu one can go there and there are different different uh, ways of of you know expressing their devotion but at the same time is is one everybody is hindu there like in, in hinduism those who uh profess hinduism okay. so that's why uh, they say no the subcontinent right so the one thing i saw was uh 
uniting all this diversity is uh, is Sanskritam. I always come back to Sanskritam because for me it has been one point, important point to to understand the culture aside from 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 my intellect, but leaving the the culture, leaving there, understanding why they. they how people live uh, 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 there in India and also in America with the Indian Indian community. It's just amazing how they bring, how they keep alive the culture. Also, is one point that remembers in Mexico a lot because similar cultures, and it's like mm, we are proud, you know, of uh, living our culture a hundred percent whatever whatever we are yeah so basically are as uh, those points uh, the way of life uh, art architecture music i am super fan of carnatic music so so many things to 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 to, to learn in india in all uh, aspects all kinds <laughs> yeah totally I, I think it's super interesting um that uh, pil going on pilgrimages and seeing other people on pilgrimages give you a real snapshot about how something is practiced or how the belief system might be different in different parts of of India, but still finding unity in, in or some commonality among all of those beliefs and practice uh, pr practices across such a broad and diverse country. Um, so I, I think that's that's wild. I, it's definitely very immersive, um, and I, I think it's is amazing that you found Sanskritam as kind of like the bedrock for all of the other um, uh, interests, uh, other facets of uh, Hindu traditions that interest you. Yeah, I just would like to mention that thanks to, to that, like Sanskrit as the key of of uh, Indian, uh, Indian er heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, after learning uh, some Hindi and some Sanskritan, my experience of India changed completely. And I was like, that, that time of tourist kind of trips were over after I learned the culture because I wanted to speak to people. I wanted to speak in, 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 in the language. Even here, I like to, to, to speak with the Indian community in their language and it just connects directly heart to heart and, and just all these values or this knowledge of this family just uh, is, is gets you directly into it, into the knowledge of the culture. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> um, Bhagini, you had also mentioned um, kind of some parallels to uh, pilgrimages that happened in, in Mexico and some similarities, which I thought was a really good segue into uh, um, a question that uh, Naisargi might, uh, might ask us. Um, I'd like to call uh, Naisargi back to the uh, to the um, screen. Yeah, and um, just to kind of uh, wrap up, I guess I I wanted to touch on the fact that our three speakers were were here today from three diff different countries, and. Um, how and just kind of understand like how that has uh, played into the factor of them engaging with Hindu heritage. So Vani Wigni, you're from Mexico. Um, how would you consider your diverse background and culture uh, coming from there and how Hindu heritage, heritage has made an impact there and where you see these cultures kind of interacting or, and coming together? Yes, I see. Um... Mexican culture and Indian culture like as, as a cultural uh, sisters. So the first time I went to India, um, it, it, it didn't take long to, 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 to feel like something I already know. Both are ancient uh, cultures and, and the values of everyday life are very similar. Mm -hmm. the the customs are also very similar mm -hmm. the practices uh are very similar so 
it is a bit difficult for me to to be intellectual in the sense that why India and all because they are very similar. I feel at home in, in both. So I am Mexico and and I am at home. I was born there, but in India I feel at home at the same level because they are really, really so close. We have a lot of communities, uh, indigenous communities. Uh, a lot of, we have uh, 68 uh, indigenous uh, languages also in Mexico and that still are spoken in Mexico. Mm -hmm. In India, we have uh, how many? 22 or 26 uh, in the schedule. So Sanskrit is also there. So in that way, I see that similarity and I try to compare them and maybe, but I don't see many difference on, on that. Hmm. I mean, it's just uh, home, like both countries are very similar. And then, and if I go uh, as, uh, if I want to just uh, intellectualize that, yes, there are uh, different languages and there are uh, different customs in question. They are, there are, I love that in India there is more vegetarian people. Uh, in, in, in Mexico is more like, you know, they are not vegetarians and things like that. But in general, I see that uh, these cultures at the end just are come, come together. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a very beautiful knowing that they're so diverse, but because both cultures are based in the environment that they come from and, and they have that like native science aspect to it, you know, understanding what cultures and what practices are work for that particular environment um, and sustaining that particular environment. I think that's why both of them have so many commonalities because that's what Hinduism is all about is just being more in tune with your environment and which is why we see all all that interaction and overlap as well <laughs> yes yeah, sure. and so um gabriel know that i would i would like to ask the same question for you is that the same case um and in your experiences in argentina and how have you seen the hindu heritage making an impact there Thank you, yes. Well, I would say that the Hindu heritage has had a huge impact in our culture, um, especially in, in large cities. In the, in the last decade or two, well, uh, some of the most important uh, elements in that influence were the yoga studios, yes, that have been uh, multiplying in, in the last decade or two. But before that, we've had very important organizations here that have been in, in Argentina and especially in large cities such as Buenos Aires for more than half a century, such as Sai Baba's organization, Hare Krishna's organization, Brahma Kumari's uh, Self-Realization Fellowship from Yogananda's. They, they have been uh, for, for quite a long time here in, in Argentina. And before that, even before that, we've had a, a very important branch of the Theosophical Society, which has also been a, a very important um, element for the introduction of uh, Hindu heritage elements. For example, um, we believe that the first Spanish translation of the Bhagavad Gita was published at the end of the 19th century here in Buenos Aires by the Theosophical Society. So that is quite early, very early and well, we've had for more than a century already these ideas circulating circulating yes in our uh, intellectual uh, context and this has for example had a, quite a, a in, an impact in literature yes argentinian literature has uh, quite a, a a trend that has been um, influenced by the orient and especially india and many authors in our literary tradition have had a very, um, well, 
big interest for all these topics. So I think that our culture has been quite uh, modeled um, in, in some aspects uh, by Hindu heritage in quite an, an important way, especially in intellectual spheres. Um, not so much yet in popular culture, but popular culture has been influenced in, in the last decade or two with, with uh, the, the quick spread of, of yoga practice. I think that this phenomenon of, of the, the, the um, quick spread of yoga practice has helped to, well, to make the, the Hindu heritage uh, reach some sect sectors of, of the population, such as young people uh, that maybe earlier had not been so much in contact with this Hindu heritage in our country. Yeah, that's great to hear. And I had no idea that as early as the 19th century that it was uh, translated, um, the Bhagavad Gita is translate, translated in Spanish. Um, and would you say that since then, something like the Bhagavad Gita, like, does that indicate that it also has an impact or influence in uh, people, or maybe just in academia, engaging with the text? Well, actually, um, uh, I wouldn't say that it was academia, because as the translation was produced by the Theosophical Society, uh, the public was the, the people... Um, familiar with the theosophical works no? and, and the theosophical society, which not which were not the, the people in, in academia. Uh, I would say that the, the entrance of um, Hindu heritage topics in academia uh, occurred um, in the decade of the 50s and in the 60s. We had a very important philosopher here called Fatone, who introduced these topics. And we've also had important philosophers and, and Indologists, such as um, Fernando Tola and Carmen Dragonetti. Uh, Fernando Tola originally is from Peru, but he came to Argentina quite early. And they have done an impressive work in Indology and in Buddhology and in studies related to epics and Sanskrit. And quite a lot uh, of the chapter in Sanskrit studies and Hindu studies in Latin America uh, were developed, uh, was developed by, by Fernando Tola and Carmen Draunetti. So uh, maybe not that early in the 19th century, but uh, in, in the 50s and 60s already, we, we have uh, interest in academia for Hindu the philosophy and Hindu literature. Yeah, thank you, Mahalia. That's great uh, facts to know about the particular influencers of Hindu heritage and during which period. Um, and I see that Vani Bhagani has her hand up. Bhagani, did you have a question? No, just I wanted to share because very interesting points uh, uh, Gabriel was mentioning. Also in, in, in Mexico has been impacted in that way very strongly with all the uh, uh, communities. Uh, also Hare Krishna is there, Siddha Yoga, Osho, all the, the meditation communities. And also there is a beautiful uh, um, Rabindranath Tagore Cultural Center in Mexico. And they have a lot of activities where they teach uh, Hindi, they teach Sanskrit, uh, Indian culture in general, and as and, and I see uh, every Mexican I know that has been in India or is studying uh, one of these in these classes, they are deeply connected because that similarities that we have in Mexico and with India directly goes there inside, and also uh, we have the. the Colegio de México, ¿no, Gabriel? Que fuiste allá también. Sí, sí, sí. Una, fabul una institución fabulosa. It's a great institution, the Colmex, yes. Yeah, and then also in, in, 
uh, in the university in Nam, they teach also uh, uh, Hinduism, Indian philosophy. So there is a big, big, big connection and a big, uh, a strong impact the, that Indian uh, culture and heritage is uh, do, doing in Mexico, how it is happening and how people are all the time more connected and more interested and uh, generally it's through yoga or meditation, but then after that, it goes more, uh, people start studying the uh, Bhagavad Gita, they go and study uh, wonderful books, wonderful poets, they go in the academics. That is the flexibility of uh, the, the Indian heritage. You can go uh, on the books, you can do yoga, you can do meditation. It's like super diverse and people of all backgrounds can join and, and, and have this experience of of, uh, of the Hindu heritage. Mm. Yeah, I think today's uh, conversations have just been the absolute like example of how Hindu heritage can pervade through con you know boundaries between countries and just diverse cultures and backgrounds. It's just that easy or like you said, flexible of a tradition that it can just kind of simply just dissolve into wherever it, uh, whatever culture or group of people it meets. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Actually, I have a, a, a question for uh, Raga Mahodaya. <laughs> uh, but and, uh, coming back into the Sanskrit uh, subject, Sanskrit hmm? Bhavataha श्लोका किंचित संस्कृत से विषय ज्ञातवान अनंतरम पटितुम आरब्धवान इदानीम किंचित जानामी पाठे आमी अपि उत्तम उत्तम सम्यक् ए भगिनी नए नए सर्गी भवती आदुना संस्कृतम पढ़ती वा आम भगिनी मामा अपि किंचित संस्कृतम जानामी एंड Currently, uh, L1 or L2 um, material patami. Mm, and I want to congratulate also Gabrielle for joining the spoken Sanskrit classes because uh, it is not only on, in the book, right? The shlokas are there, but then Mukhat Agachate Sanskrit. It has to come also from your mouth. It's so amazing. Congratulations. And your other half. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mm. Maybe I would like to ask a question as well to Naisal Ki uh, maybe related specifically to yoga. Uh, how do you think and how would you describe yoga practice among uh, the Hindu youth in North America? Hmm, the, pra the practice of uh, yoga here in North America? Yeah, maybe to Naisal Ghi. Uh, mm, Naisal Ghi. Hmm. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I would speak probably from my own personal experience. I think uh, um, it's not so much uh, like yoga. It's not something that we learned from school, but I would say most people would know from their own um, their own experiences at home. So, for example, I learned yoga or just came to know of it um, when I was like maybe um in first grade or some, something like that. And, you know, six or seven years old and my grandfather started teaching us and it was not something like, okay, now you're doing yoga. It was, okay, you wake up early in the morning, then you do your yoga, then you have, you know, a certain uh, diet and you're saying your mantras and you're doing your puja and prayers. So it was, it was a part of a routine. So, um, in that sense, it became very like, uh, a regular part of my life. And that's how I came to know of it. I didn't understand that it was a study 
that there was a something to be learned or like it was a you know something separate until I got into maybe um like later in high school and college when I would see people around me who were not Hindu taking yoga classes and that I felt uh, was like my first understanding of like okay yoga is not it it it, uh, it has been understood by a lot of people around us as something that is like an exercise um so I think a lot of Hindu students uh, or, you know, Hindu youth would resonate with my experience in learning yoga from home. Um, and I think that the way that we can continue it in our own practices and pass it on to the next generation is by understanding how yoga is, uh, is meant to continue on a holistic sense of being Hindu. So that value, I'd, I would love to continue learning about, okay, what is it about yoga that makes me more in tune with the world? And it just, uh, like, um, before Adriana Bagani was saying that it's, it's a process, and as soon as you put out the roll, roll out the mat, it starts there. Um, and um, yeah, I, I don't know, Raghav, would you say the same? Yeah, definitely. It, it's definitely become like a growing up learning it, it never felt like oh this is like a, a Hindu thing this was just something that we did as a family it was very much like a way of life like these are this is a routine um and only at some later point in time did we realize oh this is a part of this is unique to our culture this is uh um this is something that other people are interested in and interested in learning about and there are actual like beyond the f physical fitness there are like mental implications for uh yoga as a practice um there are other, there are things besides the physical aspect of yoga. Only after, like, I think learning Sanskrit did I start learning about the Ashtanga yoga, uh, meditation, dhyana, um, all of the Patan, uh, Patanjali um, uh, uh, eight uh, components of yoga. Um, so there's like so much more that <laughs> I learned only much later in life. And uh, um, growing up, it was different because, like, you know, we 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 see a snapshot and that that's that's the whole of it for us you know and we don't realize it's part of something bigger and then growing up and kind of relearning and framing what we've learned and what what we know already back into a larger narrative i, I think is a very uh, uh eye-opening experience thank you very much for sharing with us your experiences uh, then you're done, yeah. So I have a, a, another question for uh, both of you. So um, by growing up outside of India all your life, how have you get, kept up uh, with Hindu heritage? Ah, nice argument. Yeah, I would say, um, I think it definitely, I would uh, attribute, give the thanks to my parents for having kind of inculcating those values in my day-to-day -day, like upbringing and just my regular life so that I had that kind of as a as a, a robotic knowledge for me to be able to value now as I learn about it and uh, the way that I keep it up is just staying in in touch with the Hindu community and doing more Hindu work and just learning about Hinduism in general. So Sanskrit the Bharati is one of those organizations in which I stay connected and also I'm also a part of um, the helping out in my local mandir and also an organized another organization called Hindu Students Council. So all of these are just ways in which I it's my outlet for learning more and being participating as well. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I think same boat. Uh, it it never felt like any at any point in time it was something that I had to work towards to. Um, I think just because our like growing up here, my parents as they as they came over from India, they had they grew up with a certain set of values and practices that were part of our family tradition and maintaining and continuing those just felt like the natural move. Um, but since at some point in time, there, there, there was a period where we're realizing, oh, there's so much more beyond like what it is we practice. We go to the temple, we see other families and we see that there are other traditions that they all have. Um, even within like uh, people within the same like groups in India, we're seeing, oh, they, they, they have this tradition, they have this tradition. And learning about Hinduism as a practice and how it's practiced by many groups kind of, you know, 
uh, took us took me on an adventure to uh, you know part to, uh, go to like Bala Vihar programs for learning more about Hindu philosophy. Um, uh, the more uh, philosophical aspects in, of the Vedas, the Upanishads, and um, Bhagavad Gita, and then also involved resulted in me joining uh, Sanskrit Bharati for a Sanskritam class. Uh, now, primarily, I'm involved with Sanskrit Bharati ma mainly. Um, also, do a lot of work, uh, community work with the art local temple, but uh, primarily working as, uh, as a volunteer for uh, Sanskrit Bharati for uh, Sapal students. Thank you. Um, and I guess that is all the time that we have for today. So I really want to thank our guest speakers, uh, Vani Bagani, Gabriel Mahodea, and also Adriana Bagani, who had to, who joined us earlier, but we also thank her for her time and um, her thoughts that she shared. Really, I think um, we enjoyed learning more. I, I mean, uh, in light of Hindu Heritage Month, I think there's so many things that we can include within this month about what is Hindu heritage and, you know, what does that inculcate? But I, we learned something new about, oh, it's also how is Hindu heritage in um, uh, Spanish speaking countries uh, playing out. So that was quite interesting for both me and Raghav to learn for today. And I thank you once again for joining us. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you so much. And we would love to have you guys join us again sometime um, to speak on more. But uh, to end for today, I would like to invite Rani Bhagani to say the Shanti Mantra. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhatrani Pashantu Makashitu Kabhak Pave Om Shanti 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 Hi.